Ryan Watkins. Um, I'm a professor at George Washington University where I teach instructional design, needs assessment, research methods, and a variety of other courses related to performance improvement. Um, we're located in Washington, D.C. My office is about four blocks from the White House, which has advantages and disadvantages. Um, when the motorcade decides to come by our office, it's a good five-minute interruption of motorcycle noises going up and down the street. But it's an exciting place to work at the same time. My first exposure to performance improvement uh, was as a graduate student, um, coming out of an undergraduate in math education and going into a graduate program in instructional design, uh, which my brother had recently graduated from as well. Uh, my first course was with Roger Kaufman, who was my biggest influence from that point forward in my professional life, and a large part of my personal life as well. But he was really the introduction to me into the field, into the discipline, and understanding how research plays a significant role and the role of the academic side of a profession to support and to learn from and to grow with the practitioner side. And it really takes both um, to move a discipline forward, to not let it stagnate, to not let it become a craft, um, to continue in and to develop fully as a discipline and a um, course of study for students and others as well. Based on those experiences, um, he convinced me to stay on for a doctoral degree and after teaching in South Florida for a while, I moved to Washington to work at George Washington University. As I said, he was definitely the biggest influence in my professional career, though there were other significant ones with John Keller being there in Florida State and Walter Dick also being there. They played significant roles in my development as a professional as well. A variety of books have had significant influence on me. Um, and I think some of them we have to go back to what are some of the core theories that drive our profession and our discipline and really set the grounding for how we should think as professionals when we go in. We often like to focus on the applications. How do I do this? What do I do next? What's the top 10 list of things I should do, the checklist? But there's a place for theory in our thoughts and how we address problems and what are the theoretical bases. Um, so a variety of writings on systems theory, change management theory, have all been very significant in helping shape my understanding of how Performance improvement fits in with other disciplines, um, how we relate to organizational development, how we relate to HR and HRM programs, um, where we draw on them and where they could really benefit from drawing on us, and how we bring their research into our practice and our practice into their research, which has led to a lot of very interesting um, and exciting projects over the years. And I think that it allows me to both in an academic role to work with students and see how they apply and how they learn about the processes, the theories, um, how they develop, as well as then do consulting roles where I can go out and work with clients and bring those experiences back into the classroom. One of the more interesting projects that I've had recently, um, and I think that it shows to me the value uh, as performance improvement as a discipline fans out into others is in the area of capacity development and international aid. Uh, I've been recently working with the World Bank who does a lot of work in how do we develop the capacity of countries that are fragile states or stricken with poverty and how do we bring their capacity so that they can achieve the types of results they want to achieve. And it's really an area that's looking for performance technology, performance improvement, but they use a different language. They don't quite understand how it links up. They often come from NGOs or government agencies. They're not necessarily looking to the private sector for guidance, for better or for worse. Um, so it's been interesting to see how we can translate the language of performance improvement into the language of others and talk about it in terms of, well, how do you develop capacity? What are the capacity gaps rather than what we might classify as needs, looking at capacity gaps? How do we apply a variety of interventions or activities to improve the capacity and evaluate those results and keep everything very results focused? 
So it's been a fascinating process over the last several years of working with people who speak a different language, and it's not the language necessarily of business like we often read about um, in many of our publications, but it's the language of NGOs and um, development agencies that are working in third world countries, and seeing how that also relates so closely to what we do. Um, again, highlighting how interdisciplinary really our field is and how much we draw on others. Part of that has also led me to look at the research of others because I think too often we just focus on our own research. We read our own journals and we turn around and we publish in our own journals and it's very cyclical. And it doesn't really help us bring others' ideas and get our ideas out to others. So for the past several years, I've been reviewing 30 plus journals from a variety of disciplines, from management to marketing to nonprofit management, um, to psychology, to organizational behavior, to organizational design, and trying to pull out what are some of the primary lessons that other disciplines are learning that we should be trying to bring into our practice as well. Again, trying to merge where does research really meet with good quality practice within a discipline, and then how can we use that to grow a discipline and uh, bring more people into the fold and expand our message and hopefully help others achieve the desired results. Often people ask me what I do. Um, depending on the context, I may say that I teach at the university and just leave it at that. <laughs> uh, that's the simple elevator speech. Um, but if people are actually interested, I would narrow it down to say, basically, I help individuals and organizations decide how they can best improve performance, whatever that performance may be. Um, they define their goals, they know their context. What I can bring to the table is a good understanding of how people perform, how we can look at different aspects of that performance through a performance analysis, look at the root causes of performance challenges when they show up, and then look at a variety of interventions that can really pull this all together um, and improve their performance. And it's getting those results at the end that matter absolutely the most. And I think that we as a discipline can offer this as a very good um, resource for others to use at the same time. Which has led me into a variety of interesting projects. Um, that include several books, uh, most recently the Handbook for Improving Performance in the Workplace, focusing in our volume on the identification, selection, and implementation of different performance improvement activities. And we worked with 34 different authors who were known for their work in different types of interventions or activities that we might use. Everything from job crafting to succession planning to incentive systems, to how do we design good performance feedback, performance management systems. Um, tried to get a variety of authors from different disciplines to contribute. And one of the more exciting parts of that project was we actually interviewed the authors. Um, so they wrote the chapters and they provided great content, but we wanted to add the face and the context. Um, so we did podcast interviews with 25 of the 30 authors so far. We hope to wrap up the others in the coming future. And we posted those to our website um, at leadsassessment.org. And we allow people to listen to the authors who are experts in their own area talk about how their intervention could be of value depending on what types of performance challenges you're running into. Uh, and again, this allowed me to research build a research base outside of our own discipline where we could bring the knowledge of people from a variety of fields together to really address the core challenges we face in organizations when we're trying to improve performance. Um, the future of performance improvement I think is quite stellar. Um, there continues to be a number of performance problems. Every time I watch the news there's a new problem that could use some resolution it seems. But we also have some challenges. Um, our history has taken us from a variety of different perspectives into an area where we're getting pretty good, I think, at being able to identify what are the performance problems. But what we haven't always quite figured out is do we have a systematic process then 
for matching those performance problems to solutions that will actually achieve the results that we're looking to accomplish. And this is hard. This is where some people would say it's where the art and the science intermingle and there can be no easy formula to drive it. But at the same time, I think there's got to be good guidance that we can provide practitioners. It should not be something that takes 30 years of experience to learn how to do. Just as you're ready for retirement, now you're beginning to figure out how to do this really well. And then how we can teach that to students. And that takes me back to my university life. of How I can take that research then on how we do this and do it well. And then how we can get people to develop those skills quickly and go out and start achieving those results early in their professional career and achieve the type of significant results that we know are really important. The types of results that achieve um, really significant goals for organizations and as well as improve our society and the types of results our societies are looking to achieve um, as well. So I think all in all it's a very bright future but there's a lot of work ahead of us and it's going to take this good merger of research both within our own discipline as well as in other disciplines as well as practitioners bringing to that research what are the real cases that we have to deal with and how we can best do that um, in a professional setting, I think is the future. Thank you very much.